Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at using the side angle side postulate in triangle proofs. So we have given CA bisects angle DAB and DA is congruent to AB. We want to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. So the first thing that we should do with any triangle proof is you take the given information and you have to mark up the diagram that's given to you. So when we read that CA bisects angle DAB, by definition of a bisector, that means that CA is cutting this angle in half. So that means that these two angles here are going to be congruent. Once again, because angle DAB is being bisected, that means these two angles are going to be the same. So we mark off angle DAC and angle BAC with these arcs to show that they're the same. Next, we're told that DA is congruent to AB, so we can make a tick mark here to show that these two line segments are the same. And now the last one is a bit hidden, but notice that these two triangles share a common side. They're sharing AC. So we know that these two triangles are going to have another pair of sides congruent. The side AC is going to be congruent to itself. So once we look at this diagram, notice that they have each triangle has two pairs of congruent sides and a pair of congruent angles with the angle located in between them. So when we see this, we have a pair of congruent sides, a pair of congruent angles, and a pair of congruent sides. It's very important that the pair of angles that are congruent are between the two pairs of sides. Notice how these arcs are between the two sides we marked off. That allows us to use the side angle side postulate. So once we have this strategy sort of written down, we know we're going to use side angle side. This is going to help guide us through writing our proof. So we could start off with our statements and just remember that the first thing you should write in all triangle proofs is the given information. So we're going to say that CA bisects angle DAB. The reason why this is true because this is given to us. But notice when we made this statement we did not establish any pairs of congruent sides or angles so we still have a bit more to write. But now we could write the second piece of given information. We're told that line segment DA is congruent to line segment AB. And the reason why this is true once again this was also given to us. So notice because we established a pair of congruent sides, we could go over here and kind of check this off because this tells us that we've established one key piece of information. We established a pair of congruent sides, so now we just have a pair of angles and another pair of sides to establish. So we're going to go to the pair of angles next. But we have to think about what two angles are congruent in both triangles. Well, we marked off angle DAC. So we have angle DAC is congruent to angle BAC. And once again, we were able to identify this based on the fact that CA was a bisector. So we show that angle DAC is congruent to angle BAC. And the reason why this is true, we can write the definition of a bisector of an angle. Okay. So the reason why this is true, this just follows from the definition of a bisector of an angle. That when we have a bisector of an angle, it will cut the angle into two congruent angles. It cuts it in half. So now we go over to here and we could check off the A because we established our pair of congruent angles. Now last, we need to establish one more pair of congruent sides, but notice in both triangles they're sharing side AC. So we could say line segment AC is congruent to line segment AC. And we think about why would something be congruent to itself? Well, think of a mirror. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself, and it's an exact replica, even though it's a flipped image. And your mirror image is congruent. So your reflection should remind you of the reflexive property. So AC is congruent to AC because of the reflexive property. So we go over to this here, our postulate, and notice we've checked off the side, the angle, and the side. We've established three lines of congruence that we need 
to finish this proof. And remember, the last thing you write in every proof is the statement that you're trying to prove. So now we could say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. And the reason we knew this before we wrote anything, but our last reason, we could write side angle side. And we could abbreviate this with SAS. That because these two triangles share a pair of congruent sides, a pair of congruent angles, and another pair of congruent sides with the angle in between, that implies by this postulate that those two triangles are exactly the same. So this would be sufficient. You could write postulate after. But SAS is usually a appropriate or accepted form of abbreviating the side angle side postulate. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on using the side angle side postulate in triangle proofs. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.